it's not unusual for me to be asked uh, this question uh, about repentance after death. Um, I think people are hopeful that uh, there's a second chance after death, especially for those people who have ne never had a chance to hear the gospel. And I guess there's a sense of fairness that's uh, at issue here. If God does not allow a person to hear the gospel, how can he judge him for rejecting a gospel that he hasn't heard? Well, of course, that isn't th the basis of judgment. Uh, the basis of judgment is not whether or not you accept the gospel. The basis of judgment is one's behavior. And this is clear in the book of Revelations, chapter 20, I believe, where we have the great white throne judgment described there, and the judgment is a judgment based on one's deeds, which any righteous judgment should be based on. If the judge is judging uh, uh, lawbreakers or, or uh, someone deemed guilty, they are guilty of breaking laws and therefore it is the laws themselves that apply to the guilt or innocence and determine the appropriate punishment. So as God is a judge, he judges according to law breaking and that's very clear in the Revelation passage. They were all judged according to their deeds. Now, if there is one who has an advocate with the Father in Christ Jesus, there is a pardon available in virtue of their guilt. But if there were no pardon given, the people would still be guilt guilty and justifiably punished for their crimes. This is another way of saying that there is no obligation for God, God to forgive anyone if they are good, they don't deserve punishment. If they are bad, then if they get punishment, they get what is due them. Um, I have no reason to believe from anything I read in Scripture, or any specifically in Scripture, that is implicit, explicitly, nor do I have any reason to believe anything implicitly in Scripture suggests that there is an opportunity to repent after one dies especially for the reason that was cited, well, I never heard the message, because this is precisely the issue that Paul himself says will not work. And he says it in Romans chapter 1. And what he says there in Romans 1 is that they have enough to know about the Father, enough in natural revelation to know the Father. And this truth they suppressed in unrighteousness so that they are without excuse. He actually uses the phrase, they are without excuse twice, in, I think, the first two chapters there of the book of Romans, dealing with the guilt of people. Uh, no one can say, I didn't have enough knowledge. Now, it may be true they didn't know about Jesus, but everyone knew about the Father. And therefore, if they reject the Father before they get the specialized message of Jesus, the rejection of the Father is still adequate. Um, to say that they had that they are without excuse. Um, if I'm going to uh, lend you ten dollars and you spit in my face, why should I give you a hundred dollars? By the same token, people are given a general revelation that that is enough to allow them to know that God exists, and they are beholden to Him. They suppress that truth and unrighteousness. God has no obligation to give them any more information about Jesus. So simply in virtue of the fact that they have not heard of Jesus, this is not an excuse. And Paul, I think, makes that clear in Romans 1. There's no chance to repent after death. Every person is going to be held responsible for the deeds of their own lives, except for those who have responded to the mercy that God offers because of the gift that is made available through Jesus. There is no equivocation on this particular point in the New Testament.